Here are two intriguing interlinked questions. Number one, is there a year missing out of Noyach's life? And number two, why is it important for us to know how old the universe is? Even Pasuk, but Noach ben Sheish Meishan about Mabul Hoya Maim Alor. It's the Pasuk that says that Noach was 600 when the flood came to the earth. Shaitan Medrash, the Medrash says, Hashnasam Mabul, Eno Ilam in Aminyan. That the year that the Mabul continued is not included in the calculation of Noach's lifespan. That says, in other words, Vim Mephoshim Zogad, as the Mephoshim point out, as a Mabul year, Revetni Tsugirach and Rishnois of Shalnoach, that that year of the Mabul is not accumulated, is not accrued to the years of Noach's life. How do you see this? And you can see it because when the Avish gives the tally of Noyach's lifespan, he does not include the year of the Mabel. Because if you calculate it together with a Mabel, then Noyach's lifespan is 951 years. How do we know that? It's very simple. Torah tells us that Noyach is 600 and then the Mabel begins. Implying that Noach is already 600 years, and after that the Mabel begins. As the Pasuk says, it was in the 600th year that the Mabel began. In other words, he's completed 600 years, and now the Mabel begins. So that's point one. So he's 600, and then the Mabel begins in his 601st year. Then it says, Then it says that after the Mabul, Noach lived another 350 years. Simple arithmetic. 601 plus 350, 951. So therefore it should have said at the end of his life that he lived 951 years. But it doesn't. It says he lived 950 years. That implies that the year of the Mabul was not counted in the total of his years. Uh, why would that be? Um, is mas b'dem tam. However, the the, the mafreshim explain why. If he shows a shnas, it's sorrow. I also shnas a mabel a minyan shnosa because that was a, a year of difficulty. David didn't want to include it in his years. Okay, so we've got the, what appears to be a glaring issue in the psukim that it tells us he lived 950 when he actually lived 951 years. Who should address such a glaring contradiction or problem? Rashi, and he doesn't. Showing great common piyamim we've discussed numerous times. Because Rashi is not embarrassed to say, as we see multiple times, that if he doesn't know the reason for something according to Pshat, then he doesn't know the reason. So therefore we can imply that if there is any difficulty that we have with understanding the simple meaning of the Pasuk, Rashi will tackle it. And if Rashi does not explain something which to us looks like a difficulty in understanding the Pshat, nor does Rashi say that he doesn't have an explanation. Then it must be because Rashi believes we could work this out on our own. Either through the context of understanding the Pasuk. Or from information that we had previously learned either in the Torah itself or in Rashi's explanation. That's how Rashi operates. He'll explain it if it's difficult, unless he doesn't have an explanation or unless it's obvious. Which is why we have to ask the question. Because it's a simple arithmetic issue that the total years given for Nayak's life are 950. But when we do the calculation of his years before the Mabul and his years after the Mabul, it comes to 951. Which is what forces the Medrash to say, we don't count the year of the Mabul, is a glue of a Pasha Saksuvim. That is a glaring problem and apparent contradiction in Psukim of the Torah. Rashi doesn't say a word about it. How could that be? It's such a big issue in Pshat, he should address it. So mechanic zogin as Rashi held us, but pashas the shnasa mabul eno oil minamin. So you'll say, well, because Rashi maybe holds like the Medrash said, the year of the Mabul didn't count. If Rashi believes that, that is a huge insight that we would never have thought of of our own accord. Rashi falters get off shayim beferish. Any time that there's new insight into the pasuk, Rashi will spell it out. Why doesn't he? Of a frat as in the mecheshem proti v'chnas amabul yegerchent in the Torah canal. Especially when you get into the details of Noach's age by the mabul and Noach's age post the mabul, you see that the Torah is considering the mabul. Look what the Torah says. First, it says the Mabul began in the 600th year of Noach. And then the Torah says, what it sounds like an absolute contradiction, that the, 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 the waters dried up in the 601st year. There you have it. So if that's the 601st year, and after that there's 350 years, then he should have been 951 and it is passing. Why doesn't Rashi address this? 
So we'll suggest an answer. Make under some advice. Maybe we could say, in Pasuk Shtay, the Pasuk tells us, In the 600th year, that's when the heavens opened up. When you use the word in the 600th year, that implies that it's somewhere in the course of a 600th year, not necessarily at the end of the 600th year. Over made a learn, so maybe we could explain. When did the marble begin? Right at the beginning, when Noach had just entered his 600th year. Which means Noach had just completed his 599th year and had now entered his 600th year. In other words, his 599 and a bit. The marble, that's when the marble began. Of a bald apostles metaic, Bish Nash Meshon Gum and Singles Tatar is very specific about that. It says in the six hundredth year, is Dos Machiach Sizogan, that implies as Ech Dos was a shade for Nehman Shesh Meshon of a Mabel Hoya Mai Malo Oretz, that even when the Pasak says Noach was six hundred while the Mabel was on the earth, meant Venus I rein in the Yo six hundred doesn't mean at his six hundred birthday, that's when the when the marble began, but he was in his year approaching 600, which is what we call the 600th year, as we know from the, the way that we say Tidim for our upcoming birthday. That's when the marble began. Or you could even say that the Torah is speaking in past tense. The marble had been in his 600th year. In other words, when Noach hit his 600th birthday, as the marble showing event from Freya, the marble had already occurred. In other words, in his 600th year, not after his 600th birthday. We could use the same logic in the Pasuk, the Pasuk that talks about the drying up of the land. That in the 601st year, that's when the marble dried up. Right? It doesn't mean it, when he had his 601st birthday, his birthday gift was that the world dried up. In honor of 608, but rather it means at the beginning of his 601st year, just after his 600th birthday, that's when the marble dried up. So we could possibly argue that the marble began soon uh, after the, uh, um, um, Noach had entered his 600th year, and it dried up as he entered his 601st year. And then you could calculate that he's still 950 by the end of his life. So when we get to the total of Noach's life, there the Torah is talking about whole years. So there might have been a few months after his birthday. We're not going to say that he was 950 and a half years old. We're just going to say he was 950. So in other words, what we're saying is total years. There were 600 years till the marble. There were a few months of overlap into his 601st year that the marble still continued. But we're not going to talk about that because we're not going to call him 950 plus X amount of months old. So we'll say he was 950 years old. And that seems like a good explanation, right? Except the period is over the it must be. It's actually not a sufficient explanation because there's other context here as well. There are other people who lived at the same time and we have their lifespans and it doesn't seem to add up so neatly. Because even post the Kiryom and Moshiva Gomer Zokdashi, when the Ebishter warns Noach that the flood is coming in seven days' time, Rashi points out, Calculate the lifespan of Musa Shelach. And you'll see that Musa Shelach passes away when Noach is 600. In other words, how do we work this out? We know that Musa Shelach lived the longest period of time, 969 years. And Musa Shelach was 187 when he bore Lemech. When Lemech himself was 182 years when Noach was born. So to Zaman, put those two lifespans together, or those two ages together, yet Shin Samach Teshon, 369 years of, from Mr. Shelach till Noach. Now you can do the maths. The total lifespan of Mr. Shelach is Tov Tov Kuf Samach Teshon, 969 years. That ended at the 600th year of Noach. Because tough race on Shin Samachtes is tough tough Kuf Samachtes. Simple mathematics. You take the 600 years of Noach plus the 369 years of his father and grandfather from Mr. Shelach, from Melemech's birth until Noach's birth. And what do you see? You see that, that, that uh, Mr. Shelach is 969 when Noach is 600. On the Baal, that's Mrs. Mr. Shelach is given to my marble. And seeing as we know that Mr. Shelach passed away before the marble, because the Torah is clear about that. 
Come to us, as we should not stop for the Chai Noach Goyim and Ifku Goyim. That means that Noach was already six hundred. Not like we wanted to suggest he was in his six hundredth year. He was already six hundred apparently when the heavens opened. Meant Noach then be Noach is shown out to give him to Freshana. That means the Mabel began after Noach was already six hundred. There goes our theory that the Torah was talking about he's in his six hundredth year. Okay, but there might be a way around this. But Pashas Voltmin Doski can't answer it. We could possibly answer. Then we spare Ashana when Yehuda had to make the Givenas Bnei. Let's look at this just objectively, objectively for a moment. When we speak about the fact that each person gave birth to a child at a particular age, right, is, is 187 when he has Lemech, and Lemech is 182 when he has Noyach. It doesn't mean that on their birthday, when they became 187 or 182, that's the day that the child was born. That would be a real stretch. Because if you do suggest that, then effectively what you're saying is that everybody had the same birthday. Each of the people listed in the Torah that they lived X amount of years and then they gave birth, you'd be implying they were all born on their father's birthday. Which would imply that everybody's birthday was Rosh Hashanah because they were all born on the day of their father, their father, their father, all the way to Adam Arishan, which of course nobody is going to suggest. So rather not as main as noch dem is having had the misbe yorn. Rather, what the Torah is telling us when they had reached that particular age, not on the date they became that age, is in meshach from dem yor I do during that year. That's when they gave birth, which is exactly how you and I would speak. We say I had that child when I was twenty-five, not on my twenty-fifth birthday. But made that toys common, and therefore we can extrapolate. As we bow the kuf base, kuf base zayin shona from Mr. Shelach Balidas Lemech, take the 187 years of Mr. Shelach till Lemech was born. And the kuf base shona from Lemech Balidas Neach, and then the 182 years that Lemech lived before Neach was born. Zayin and Mitzrayim, they also have extra months that we're just not mentioning in the Torah. Is mitzir from di Shirayim mitem exes from Shnas Tov Reishan Lechayin Neach. Take those extra months plus extra months of Neach's uh, life. Put that all together, and you've got the missing year of how Mr. Shelach could have been passed, it could have passed away before the Mabel, and yet before Noach was actually 600. Because you add together all the extra months, and it turns out that he passed away before Noach was technically 600, in other words, in his 600th year, and that's when the Mabel began. And then we still are okay to say that the Torah was not suggesting that there's a missing year somewhere, and maybe that's why Rashi didn't have to comment on it because we could do this arithmetic ourselves. But. It's still not absolutely clear. Because when again Chet from Der Flogger, we have other chronological information around the story of the Mabel, which is when the Der Flogger decided to build a big tower to support the heavens, so Rashi, Rashi explains their, their logic. Omru, they said, Ach, every 1656 years. The, the heavens crack. Like they did at the Mabel, and we've got to support it. Was the cheshem from Ella for Tov Rishon and Shavav Shonim? So when you take this calculation, one thousand six hundred fifty-six years is a sachakel from the Shnois Hoyladas from the Oizgerach and Derish from Adam and Noach. That is obviously the total of how many people lived from Adam until Noach, right? Because that's the calculation. They believe how frequently this uh, structural damage happens to the heavens. Now, Abur Oy Mevet Lenon Kedir Il. But if we're going to suggest as we have just done. As in was very nitgerechent that there are loose months that we're not bringing into the cheshbon, but they actually exist. Then across the span of ten generations, there have to be a lot of extra days, weeks, months. Was very which we're not counting. Now, logically, if you have ten generations of people who lived extremely long times. Some of them almost a millennium. There's no question that all these extra days, weeks, and months must have added at least a year to the total. So it shouldn't have been such a simple amount of 1,656 years. There must be at least 1,657 years because there's got to be an extra year over there if we're willing to accept that there are months that are not being counted individually. So back to square one, how do we know that Noach, in fact, was not at 951 when he passed away because all of our calculations are ignoring the, the little pieces, the fractions. 
So the Chayra Vatman can't learn him. He has another suggestion. As a Sechakel Cheshman from Elif Tafresh and Vav Shonim, is Val Shnei Sa'ar Noshim Nunyam Minin Shnei Sa'ilam. But maybe what we're doing over here is when we're counting these 10 generations, we're not counting the person's age from birthday to birthday. We're counting the person's age relative to the age of the world. So if the world is 100 years old, we'll say this person is now 100 years old, assuming that it's Adam Arishan from the beginning of the world. Or if a person was born in the 300th year of the world and they lived for 200 years, so we'll say they are 500 years at the time of the year where the calendar changes, not when their birthday happens. Rosh and Rashi in Pashas Kisisa, which Rashi alludes to. So therefore, when we make a total of how long everybody lived all together, we don't actually mean take all of the days and all of the years and all of the months, put them all together and give a total. We mean over how many years of history did all of these people live? Now, I think you'll all agree that that is a very difficult way to learn. It would be really difficult to suggest that that's how Rashi is learning our parasha. Rashi doesn't make one mention of it. Because the simple understanding of the Pasuk to suggest that we measure people's ages not based on their birthdays, but rather based on the age of the year, uh, of the world, that is a real stretch. As Ventura Rechenstein Schreib von ein Menschen. To suggest that the Torah is saying when Mr. Shelach was 969 years old, we don't mean he was 969 years old. We mean the world was 969 years old when Mr. Shelach passed away. That is a profound suggestion that is certainly not pshat, and Rashi should have at least alluded to it. So how do we understand the chronology, and specifically, how do we understand the total of Noach's life? Vahabir Bozeh. And Derech pshat. The simplest way to understand Torah is when the Torah gives a person's age. Without using an expression like it does by Moshe Rabbeinu to say, today I'm 120, implying this is his birthday. We can accept that the Torah is speaking in general terms. It's not being that specific to the day. Might be a little bit older than the stated age within a half a year. Or the or Younger than the stated age within a half a year. Because the reality is, we know that generally speaking, we always follow the majority of anything. So if a person has either got the majority of the 600th year, we can already call them 600. Or if they're not yet in the majority of the 601st year, we can still call them 600. And the meat is not meglatik dem cheshman for nele fatafish nun bal shonim, which makes it a lot easier to understand that there are flogger speaking about a period of 1,656 years. In the same way as we understand that the generation is also not so neatly packaged. A generation might have had an overflow of a few months or whatever it is. So some people maybe lived longer than the stated age. Some people maybe lived a little bit shorter than the state, stated age. And it all kind of evens out. And that's why when you collate everybody's ages across the span of history, it pretty much aligns with the age of the year of the world at that time for obvious reasons, because these people obviously lived in the world for the duration of the world. So we don't have to get caught up in this one actually lived this and six months and that one lived that minus three months. We're just speaking round numbers. And based on that, we get a calculation of the span of human history aligned with the span of the existence of the world. Okay, now why is this all relevant to us? So let's take this a little deeper. Even though this is not going to be so close to Pshat. The time of the simple reason, why is it that the Torah tells us how old each person was when they gave birth to their child? It's not a history book, it's not an almanac. What's the difference to us? It's to give us milestones that we could use to refer to occurrences that are recorded in the Torah because we can compare the ages. And we see Rashi do this quite often to help us contextualize chronology. He says, well, look at this person when they were born and then that, when that person was born, and that's how long you know the Jews were in Egypt, for example. So therefore, if we now understand that the primary reason that the Torah feels it necessary for us to know the ages of people when they became parents is in order for us to understand the context of the whole chronology of existence, 
Kemen Zogin, as the Mishra Kosa Batera, so therefore we can conclude that whatever number is stated in the Torah, Beyachas today, Lada from the Mishprati, even though it's about the birth of so and so an individual, can have an unintercede from Kagat Sveyor, could be a, 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 there could be a, a correction of, of almost two years, uh, you know, on either side, or a year on either side. Because Kimatim Gansen Yor and Adaf Altver and Kachva Kachshona, and Kimatim Gansen and Nochdem, we are showing Ven Alt. So the whole year leading up to the person, let's say, 100th birthday, we can already say is there a 100. And the whole year following the 100th birthday, you can say there are 100. And by the way, this is exactly how it is in our lives, specifically around uh, milestone birthdays, that people often speak in those terms. You're pushing 50. I'm already, I, I, I am 50. And, and you're just talking months around a particular date. The dogma. Let's use the example of 187 years in which we used about Mr. Shedach when he gave birth to Lemech. It could be that he's just had his 186th birthday and we're already talking about the fact that he is heading for 187. Or it could be just before his 188th birthday and we're still calling him 187 and both are valid. There's that degree of leeway in the numbers that we're, uh, that we're suggesting over here, or that the Torah is presenting. And therefore, we might not know the exact time of a person's birth. It doesn't matter. It helps us understand what we need to understand, which is to understand the context and chronology and age of the world. Because as we've pointed out, when you collate everybody's birth and everybody's lifespans together, you have a sense of the age of the world. And, and the, 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 the error margin is going to be less than a year. So we have a fairly accurate, or in fact, we have a pretty accurate way to determine the age of the world. Now, why do we have to know that? The reason, at least at a deeper level, why the Torah is so interested in teaching us about the age of the world. We'll understand from So there's this fellow Akilas, and he wants to, he's a Roman, he wants to convert to Judaism, and his family are the, the Roman royalty, the Caesar, and they don't want him to do it. And one of the reasons that he gives why he finds Judaism attractive, has a time of St. Rotten is so he lists a whole lot of things, one of which is that even the most unlearned Jewish person, the most junior Jewish person, knows how old the world is. So obviously the list of, of um, greatness or, or, or of milus, of, of um, elements that he quotes about the Jewish people, are obviously his motivation to become Jewish. So clearly it's not just saying that the Jews are wise people. Now, He's obviously saying these are things that are fundamental to the Jewish faith, and that's why I'm attracted to the Jewish faith. So there's something about knowing the age of the world that is fundamental to Jewish faith, to, to Jewish faith that to this guy, Achilles, is so interesting that he wants to uh, embrace Judaism. So what's so fascinating is the Bir Bazir. The Muno in Chidosh Olam is any from the Yisraelis from Torah. Our belief that the Ebesha renews the creation daily and mo- every moment is a foundational principle of Torah. As the Ramban calls it, The Ramban says this is so fundamental that if a person rejects the possibility and believes that the world is a, 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 you know, something that, that exists essentially, that's a rejection of everything. So it has no, that person has no connection to Torah. Now we know that when it comes to faith, everybody has faith. It's just a question of what kind of faith and many, many levels. One person can have absolute faith. But he has absolute faith, but it's not clear to him. It's not something that he knows, for example, as clearly as he knows that it's daylight right now. You can't compare something that you've learned or heard about versus something that you see as real. Even if you're absolutely confident that whatever you're hearing is true, you can never compare hearsay to something you've seen with your own eyes. And that's what impressed this Akilas fellow about the fact that even the simplest Jew knows the age of the world. He also believed in creation of the world, and it was clear to him. 
And they say, no, it's man, when the Ibish the Hotba Shafin developed, but what he's impressed about the Jewish person is not only does he know absolutely that Abish created the world, not only is that clear to him, but he knows when. He knows the exact date. He can tell you exactly how many years ago that happened. That is relevant to us because that means our experience of the Abish creating the world and that it's an ongoing process, and that the world only exists because of the Abishta, is absolutely clear to us till the day we could say it happened 5,785 years ago and, and this many weeks. That's why the Torah goes through all of this detail to tell us all the ages, so we should be able to know the chronology of the world, so we should be able to have this clarity so that our emunah in creation should be absolutely whole as it is, and so much so that the rest of the world uh, um, respects us for it.